Hey guys, sorry I hadn't made a video in a while. I've been uh, working on another little side project. I saw Muddy Waters' video the other day where he was uh, working on making a sheet metal break, and that got me to thinking I've been needing one. I do a lot of duck work and stuff, so a sheet metal break could come in real handy. And I did some research and actually found a set of plans on the internet at a website that uh, for 10 bucks basically gives you a detailed measured set of drawings with pictures, illustrations, a uh, detailed list of all the parts and pieces that you'll need. I had to go buy some 3-inch uh, by 3-inch, quarter-inch angle iron. So it's going to be pretty hefty. It should bend up to 16-gauge uh, or maybe even a little bit bigger uh, sheet metal if I'm able to uh, physically move it. I'm sure the uh, brake will probably handle it. The only question is, will I be able to pull up and uh, bend the metal with it? Uh, the plans and stuff were pretty detailed, and I've been working on the last couple of days machining all the parts and stuff out. Um, a couple of them were kind of a pain in the rear end because you have to drill some 5 8 holes in some of the uh, pivot points and stuff because it actually has to have uh, 5 8 bolts, and I've got to machine those down for pins to uh, weld on to the third piece of this angle iron, which is actually the moving part that does the uh, folding of the sheet metal. But this sets through here. The biggest drill bit I had was uh, half inch, so I ended up having to take a step bit and uh, go down with it until I got five-eighths sized hole. But unfortunately, the steps on the bit weren't half inch thick like the metal that I'm using, so I ended up having to uh, flip it over go at it from the other side and then the sixteenth of an inch or whatever that was left I had to end up using a die grinder to uh, finish up the hole. So I just got done finished machining all that stuff and I'm working on trying to uh, get the rest of the uh, small pieces and parts and everything done. I'm going to have to uh, take the 5 8 bolts to a local machine shop. It's got to have a, uh, uh, I guess you call it a rabbit. Uh, half the distance of the uh, bolt, so it'd be 5 16 and 5 16 machined out of it, and I don't have anything here to uh, do that with. I don't have a mill or anything. I wish I did. Uh, everything I've been doing has been on my drill press, uh, die grinders, uh, hand files, and so forth. Uh, I've been watching everybody else's videos, though. Uh, good job on a lot of the stuff that you guys are doing. There and that carbon fiber stuff, man, that's really interesting. I'm going to uh, probably do some of that on my dash whenever I get ready to put the dash back in it. I just got done... Uh, trying to media blast a lot of it in the cabinet to get all the rust and stuff out of the inside of it. Kind of the way Turbo Cobra is doing his, uh, getting everything cleaned up. And uh, that's actually a pretty good idea, the way uh, Gary and Matt did that, by doing all the wiring and stuff. I'm going to be using an aftermarket wiring harness on my car as well. And that actually makes a lot of sense to uh, go ahead and get everything mocked up and get your wires and everything figured out where you're going to go before you put that cow panel and stuff in. Uh, my actually is not connected to the car yet either. Uh, it's just sitting on here right now to get it up out of the way. Uh, it's actually in there pretty good. But as you can see, it's uh, it's not attached either. So I may go ahead and try to get my wiring and stuff in like uh, Matt and Gary did before uh, I try to weld that thing down. I am going to uh, probably weld mine though. I know that uh, Gary used the panel bonding adhesive. I think that's a pretty good idea. but. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and weld mine. Uh, I'm just kind of old school like that. Uh, not to say that adhesive wouldn't work well. Uh, that's what I used when I put that quarter panel patch on before I decided to tack weld it in place too. But I'm just going to uh, go ahead and put the uh, wiring harness and stuff in. Of course, I'm a long way away from that right now. I've also been working on uh, trying to finish blasting and get all of the uh, Jaguar suspension parts and stuff painted. I'm sorry to keep running on the tripod and back and forth. But the, uh, the springs, the, uh, the mounts, which actually mount onto the side of the differential that hold the, uh, the wishbones, the lower control arms. Of course, there's my uh, front suspension, the uh, control arms for that. I've uh, just been trying to keep moving on these pieces and parts and stuff, trying to get everything blasted in the blast cabinet so that I get it all clean and get everything coated in black. Uh, semi-gloss paint so that everything's you know going to look good underneath the car. I've just got a couple of small minor pieces left and then I can start reassembling the car. I'm sorry, the uh, rear suspension. I've still got the uh, the wishbones. 
to do, uh, some small brackets and stuff to go with those. I'm not going to worry about the shocks. I'm going to have to replace them. I'd actually hope to reuse those, but they're shot. You mash on them, they don't do anything. Then, of course, I've got the cage that uh, everything mounts in. A piece of sheet metal there. Uh, I'm going to try and take this outside tomorrow or the next day when it's saying it's supposed to be kind of nice outside and uh, degrease it. I may even throw it in the back of my truck and take it to the car wash to get as much crud and stuff off as I can. And I'm going to stick it in the blast cabinet and uh, get rid of all the debris and everything and then go around all these little crevices where all the bolts and everything go into it get it all cleaned up and blasted, then I'm going to uh, hit it with some uh, etching primer and kind of leave it like that because I'm probably going to have to notch the ends of it where the existing brackets are now because they do not line up with the frame rails in the car. So I've got to get everything sitting level and plumb and then mount this cage in there with uh, about a five degree angle, I think is what I figured for the uh, differential so that it'll match the drive shaft. And once I get that figured out where it's going to sit, I can notch this, make some brackets. This actually bolts rigidly to the uh, uh, to the subframe of the car. They had rubber bushings in it before. If I can figure out a way to do it and reuse those existing mounts, maybe relocate them, I think I can do that. But a lot of it's really going to depend on how it lays out. So I've not done a lot of videos lately, but I have been working on stuff. And, uh, I've been trying to watch everybody else's videos and leave comments and stuff for all the neat stuff that you guys have been doing. Uh, I am still around. Sorry, I've not uh, gotten more videos up. But I've just been trying to get a little bit of work done, and I didn't really want to bore you guys, you know, watching me show you stuff that I'd spray painted. Uh, when I start welding all of this uh, stuff together on the sheet metal brake, I will go ahead and turn the welder on for that. I'm going to break out my uh, Lincoln. 220 buzz box tombstone welder like they used to call them uh, like Greg is doing with that uh, pivot door He's doing those things really lay a nice bead and they're a lot of heavier duty was picking man tongue-tied uh, Particularly with quarter-inch metal and up. I've got a MIG welder and I've also got that TIG over there that goes up to 300 amps But when you start getting into large metal like this, I would just assume go ahead and use the uh, the stick welder so that uh, I can use the bigger rods. I don't have any real large TIG rods, and uh, if you're not careful with that, uh, and uh, plus I'm not that good at TIGing yet, I'm, I'm a lot more uh, competent at the stick and the MIG, but I want to make sure that these welds and stuff are real good, so I want to start trying to fold that metal up with these things. It'll, uh, it'll hold up. You don't want that thing to snap right in the middle of a well, uh, fold, and it pitch you over the top of it. So. Well, I've probably bored you guys long enough. I just wanted to let all of you know that I am watching your videos, and uh, sorry that I hadn't got anything up sooner. And uh, hope all you all are doing fine. And look forward to seeing more videos from the rest of you guys, and I'll try to get up here a little bit more often and hit the record button. So thanks again for all you guys, and I'll be talking to you later. See you.